Hi folks, my name's Ashley, I'm one of the founders of Skira and I'm here today to show you everything that's new in the latest stable release, Construct 3, uh, release 164. Let's get started. Uh, the main uh, new feature with the timelines feature is uh, you can now change which instance plays on the timeline. So before you could only um, play a timeline with a single instance, which is the one you put in the editor. So if I show you, for example, here, I've set up a simple timeline uh, to play with the piggy, which just goes in a zigzag, and it looks like that. Um, and if I wanted to play that timeline with uh, the octopus sprite, which is a different kind of object instead, um, that wouldn't previously be possible. But now uh, there's the new set instance action in the timeline plugin, which allows for this. So if, if you look at this first action here, this will play the uh, timeline as it is in the editor with the piggy instance. Um, and you can also now use wait for previous actions to complete, to wait for that previous timeline to finish playing. And now here's the new feature. Uh, this will uh, use the set instance ac action to change which object will play on the track named my track. And if you look at the track properties here, I've named this track my track. So that will replace the piggy with the octopus object for the playback of the timeline when it comes to the play action here. And so then if I um, preview this, you can see the piggy play. It will wait for that to complete. And then it plays the timeline with the octopus sprite instead. So that shows you how uh, you can use the timeline feature to uh, play any kind of objects through your timelines. It's, it makes it much more powerful. So hopefully that will be something uh, you enjoy using. Another thing worth mentioning is that now that you can play the same timeline with multiple ob different kinds of objects, um, we've changed uh, the, ti the timeline playback to use a tagging feature, much like the audio plugin or the tween behavior. Uh, this is because previously it referenced timelines by either a drop-down list or by their name. But in this case, there are two separate timelines playing, which are the from the same timeline, timeline one here. Um, so by giving them se uh, separate tags, you can then control them independently uh, using, for example, pause a timeline by its tag. And you could say pause timeline tag second, and it will only pause one of them. All your old actions will continue working if you're still using uh, the actions which reference by name or by timeline. Uh, but for new projects, you can simply use the tagging system instead, like everything else does in Construct. and. Uh, this will let you keep full control of all your timelines. Next up, let's take a look at what's new in the scripting feature. The big new improvement in this release is there's now an autocomplete feature. This is great for coding. Uh, let me just show you how it works. It's much like it works for typing expressions. As you start typing, it suggests terms from your existing scripts, and you can choose from the list to quickly uh, help you type things quicker and also helps avoid typos because it's uh, using uh, terms elsewhere in your script. So this is a uh, super handy for productivity. It helps you write lots of code um, without um, getting stuck having to type every single character. So that's cool. Uh, we hope you find that useful. And there are also more scripting examples you can find on the start page. A particularly interesting one is integrating events with script. Uh, this shows you how event blocks and JavaScript code can integrate. There's a uh, two approaches in there to show you how to do that. Another thing worth mentioning is that now when you go to export your project, um, there's uh, different types of minify modes. So minifying is about how it uh, shrinks your JavaScript down, which makes it smaller and uh, harder to reverse engineer. Previously, if you ticked the minify mode checkbox, which was all you had before, that would do advanced mode. But when you write JavaScript code in the editor, you have to write your code uh, in a slightly special way just to make sure it's not broken by the way it renames properties in a process called property mangling. Uh, if you look at this manual entry, it will show you how all of that works. It's quite simple once you get your head around how the, how the minify process works. It's not too difficult to write code which will uh, work even in advanced minify mode. But if you don't want to worry about that, you can just choose simple mode that will do safe optimizations which never break your code. 
Finally, there's uh, on scripting, there's uh, lots of new scripting APIs which you can find in the scripting reference section of the manual uh, and they also include various plugin interfaces so you can now do things like control various kinds of objects from the scripting feature. That's all I'm going to cover in this video for now. Uh, there's still uh, absolutely tons new if you go and check out the releases section on the website. Um, there's things like improved Safari 13 support, there's some performance improvements, you can do you can load style sheets at runtime and we also have an Italian language translation for the editor so uh, plenty more new there, we'll have more on the way in the next uh, beta cycle as it starts in the next couple of weeks so thanks and enjoy the new release